the politics of the collective West that allows the genocide in Gaza to take place, unhindered and unimpeded, policies led by the United States but shamefully supported by almost all European countries, is now at such an unbelievably cruel and sick point that one can only cry. Even the much-touted relief that is supposed to be underway in form of food and medicine dropped on Gaza via air and now being prepared to be shipped to its shores is just another sick chapter in the genocide of the Palestinian people. They are nothing but decoys meant to calm down the political unrest in the US and in Europe. You know, these mass protests that have been going on for the past five months. These efforts are supposed to showcase that something is being done, while in reality, the Biden administration is providing all the weapons, all the bombs and all the political backing needed for the IDF to systematically and intentionally kill as many Palestinians as it can before ethnically cleansing the Gaza Strip of the survivors. This is now very, very clear. One just needs to read the headlines of any newspaper, even those in the West. While they don't really say what's actually going on, they give all the information needed to understand this. Just look, look at this here in the New York Times. White House denies Biden has set red lines for Israel Hamas war in Gaza. The White House needs to make sure that it is understood that Israel can do whatever it wants. It doesn't want to be misunderstood. The Biden administration repeated its warning that Israel should not attack the city of Rafa, the southernmost city in the enclave, without protections for the more than a million people sheltering there. That almost sounds as if though uh, the Biden administration actually says that Israel, there's something you must, you cannot do. But oh no, that's actually not the case. The White House denied on Tuesday that President Biden had set any red lines for Israel in its campaign against Hamas in Gaza, but warned again that Israel should not attack the city of Rafah. So while saying don't do X, they're also saying, but if you do X, that's your business. You can do that. I mean, it's your war. It's whatever you want to do, you know, not our business. You do whatever you need to do. We just advise that you shouldn't. But if you don't, then no problem. What kind of warning is that? What kind of superpower has ever spoken like this when it was not when it, when it was not okay with anything happening? I mean, this is the same country that that invades dozens of other countries, that meddles in internal affairs, that tries to kill or to get rid of, of elected leaders. You know, Haiti, like how many times the US has has prevented a diplomatic, uh, uh, a democratic process in Haiti from actually taking place and um, and outright replaced elected elected leaders. That same superpower says like we wouldn't put any any red lines in the sand when it comes to Israel. The president didn't make any declarations or pronouncements uh, or announcements, said Chuck Sullivan, the president's national security advisor, referring to an interview um, Mr. Biden gave. In the interview with MSNBC, Mr. Biden rebuked Prime Minister ben Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel over the rising civilian death toll in Gaza, saying that he must pay more attention to the innocent lives being lost and that he's hurting Israel more than helping. The American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee spokesperson uh, replied to this that uh, Israel's allies cannot say you support Israel's goal of destroying Hamas and then oppose Israel when it takes the actions necessary to achieve that goal. Can you see how sick this is that the Israeli spokes that spokespeople for, is, for Israel's policies are actually still depicting the 30,000 dead Palestinians, the 12, 13, 14,000 dead children as a necessary way of implementing the, their policy. Mr. Biden, um, the article continues, while trying to increase the pressure on Mr. Netanyahu, has insisted that US support for Israel remain, remain steadfast which of course then includes all the weaponry needed in order to kill all of these people and to to execute this genocide it is it is utter madness that the greatest power that the earth has ever seen does not 
actually put real political pressure in the form of saying like no more weapons, no more, no more, um, no more money for you, Israel, if you don't, uh, if you don't immediately stop killing all of these innocent people. None of this is happening. Israel's officials have said they are developing a plan to evacuate civilians from Rafah, the article says, and Mr. Netanyahu said on Tuesday, we will finish the job in Rafah while enabling the civilian population to get out of harm's way. This is the entire narrative at the moment of Israel that somehow they will magically conjure up an, a different plot of land in Gaza where everybody from Rafah can be evacuated to. There is no place to evacuate to anymore. Everything has been bombed. There is no civilian infrastructure left, uh, which which this um, roughly one million people in Rafah could, could be using. The level of destruction is absolutely horrible. The only thing that Mr. Netanyahu maybe can be talking about is that maybe they're preparing um, sending all of these people across the Rafa border into the Sinai, into, into Egypt, which is probably a goal of Israel, and ethnically f uh, and finish the ethnic cleansing, finish the job of getting rid of 90 or 95 percent of the Palestinian population, uh, population of Gaza, whether they are dead or uh, displaced into into an other plot of land. Um, at the moment, I don't think Egypt is playing along with this. I hope they are they are not. Although I really don't know how to how to how to decrease the suffering of these people. It is absolutely horrible. The second they leave, they will never return, and if they don't leave, they will die. This is the current situation in Gaza. And in order to pretend that toward their own people in the US and in Europe, in order to pretend that. Uh, you know, the West is trying to do their utmost, is trying to, to reduce the suffering of the Palestinians in Gaza. They are pretending to do something. So at the, there was an airlift with, uh, with ready-made meals that was dropped on Gaza. And now there, are, there is going to be ships that go to Gaza, right? First aid ship heads to Gaza, um, but far more is needed. The maritime package of more than 200 tons of food is a welcome milestone, but not nearly enough to prevent famines and relief officials who called on Israel to allow more aid delivery by land. And this is this is this is crazy. Um, they they want to deliver these 200 tons. The food was only a tiny fraction of what it would actually take to alleviate the widespread hunger in Gaza, because you you have nearly two million people still there that somehow need to get access to food and and fresh water and medicine and need treatment. Um, the 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 need in this territory, the humanitarian need, is humongous, is absolutely huge, and this will not do. Um, this will not help the these people. Uh, it doesn't help to be fed before being shot. You will still end up dead. This is at best a last meal for uh, the population of Gaza, at best. Um, just look at this. I mean, Hamas has said that it will agree. Um, sorry, there's another one that I wanted to read to you here. Gazan officials have said that this that sea shipments and airdrops are both cumbersome and cannot come close to supplying as much as trucks each truck carrying food into gaza has been loaded with roughly 16 to 33 tons according to the united nations and other agencies meaning that the amount coming by sea is by far less than what enters gaza by land on a single day you need about 200 such trucks a day in order to come close to deliver enough um, material for what the population of gaza actually needs 200 tons you know that's that's maybe five trucks at best and now you will say, oh, but um, the United States is delivering this by sea. You know, you do whatever you can. This is madness. It is madness. All of this territory is controlled by Israel, 100% controlled by Israel. This is Gaza. The land border is controlled by the uh, by the IDF and they don't let anything through. And when they decide to let something through, then um, uh, Israeli extremists come and uh, impede uh, humanitarian aid from reaching uh, reaching people in Gaza. The Rafah border and so on is also co-occupied uh, and, and, and controlled by Israel. And Israel also controls the sea. It controls the sea. The, Israel has also put up a no-go zone around the um, around the coast this is why for two years for um, uh, my apologies why for 
the last 14, 15 years, uh, Gaza was an open air prison because even by sea, nobody can leave. The, um, the Israelis kill uh, fishermen who, who venture too far out and they kill people who try to come in. There was this famous um, attempt by, Tur by a Turkish boat to actually go get into Gaza and deliver aid. And in, in, in that attempt, the Israelis, they stormed the boat and they killed several Turkish uh, sailors and um, and and took uh, took the boat to their harbor. I mean, nobody gets in and out of Gaza without Israel's permission. So the fact that this that this boat now can enter this 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 part of the Mediterranean Sea is because Israel says, okay, fine, United States, you can send one boat and it can disembark because they know precisely that whatever these boats can carry, whatever can be airlifted, is not going to be nearly enough for what is needed. This is. This is this is just makeup, makeup on trying to make the West uh, and especially the United States look okay toward their their own people. This is nothing at all. If if the United States was actually serious of helping, and if the European the Europeans were actually serious about helping, they would put enough pressure on Israel to open the goddamn land border and let these trucks go through. You cannot tell me that Israel can can kill thirty thousand uh, Palestinians in their in their own land and is not able to prevent settlers and other extremists from actually blocking the the the, the border when some trucks are are supposed to go to go through. This is a deliberate and intentional. Uh, policy of genocide, starvation, and uh, and outright killing of the remaining uh, people in Gaza. Thirty thousand Ga thirty thousand Palestinians are already dead, and it's going to be much, much more um, until unless Israel is brought to its senses and actually lets stops the bombing campaign and le and lets uh, humanitarian goods go through. But you know the, um, the 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 negotiations between Israel and, and and Hamas are now portrayed as being in a stalemate. You know because both sides both sides don't want to give in. But look at what the demands from these two sides are. According to according to the New New York Times, I remind you, Hamas has said that it will agree only to a long term ceasefire that requires Israel to withdraw its troops from Gaza. Israel has said it will not stop fighting in Gaza until Hamas is eliminated as a military threat and has indicated that even uh, then it would maintain a military presence in the territory. Ham Israel is demanding that anything that will stop the fighting will only be uh, for, for a short period of time until all of the uh, until all of the uh, hostages are out and then the, the killing will continue and that it will kill all of Hamas. So it 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 is it, its demands are that Hamas agrees that Hamas is being killed and in the process in the process probably also as many Palestinians as possible because that's what we have seen the last five months the, these pictures are unmistakable this is a genocide that is happening and the European Union and the US will this is the greatest sin since the end of the say of the Second World War of uh, that 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 I'm that I can right now think of. It is utterly sickening, and it is going to be part of the end of the hegemony of Europe and the United States. Because the rest of the world, the rest of the world, the two thirds, the three quarters that are not uh, European or American, they will remember this. It is a sad, a sad moment for humanity.